Welcome to your new chat section. On here, you're going to be able to connect and manage many different inboxes so you can communicate with your customers across all different channels. First, you want to click on Inboxes and click on Add New Inbox. From here, you're going to be able to select what sort of inbox you want to create. In here, you can create a website chat widget. This allows you to do real-time chat with website visitors, connect a Facebook inbox, Twitter, WhatsApp with Twilio, Gmail, or any email service where you have a custom domain name. We also have an API channel for custom integrations, like with a mobile app, for example, Telegram, and Line. In this example, I'm going to be using the email option to show you what the process is like to connect your own custom domain for email. Now before we create this inbox, let me explain quickly what the difference is between Gmail and email. If you're using Gmail or Google Workspace, you'll select the Gmail option. If you're using any other email service and you happen to own your own custom domain, you're going to select the email option. The Gmail option will confirm you have permission to use this domain by logging in to your Google account. The email option will confirm you have permission to use this email domain by asking you to update some DNS settings on your domain. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and give this channel a name. So I might call this Joe's Inbox. From here, I'm going to go ahead and enter in my email account. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I'm using a Gmail account. And if I was using a Gmail account, I would actually want to click on the Gmail option. Um, but I'm going to enter this in here just to show you how this option works because it's a little bit different. On this page, you'll be able to select what agents can access this inbox. Now, if you're just working with yourself in here, you're an administrator, so you can always access this inbox. But if you're working in a team environment, you might want to grant certain team members access to this inbox as well. This would be perfect if you're using the inbox for, let's say, customer service, tech support, or you're all working out of a general support inbox. So I'm just going to skip this step and click Add Agents. Now my new inbox is ready to configure email forwarding. We automatically generate a unique email address that you can use to configure email forwarding with your existing email service. The reason we do it this way is so we don't interfere with anything regarding your existing email service. So any changes that you make are not going to affect the sending or receiving of messages to your existing email service. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this email forwarding address and we're going to set up email forwarding. So this email inbox will get a copy of all emails that come into your existing email service. Now if you don't want all emails to come into this inbox, you can typically, typically set up rules that allow you to forward only specific emails. Now the settings for this are a little bit different depending on the email service that you use, but I'm going to show you how this works for Gmail. But you'll want to check with the email service that you use for more specific instructions. So I'm going to come into my Gmail inbox. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Settings. And under All Settings, I'm going to see an option for Forwarding. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click Add a Forwarding Address. Here I'm going to paste the unique email forwarding address I received and I'm going to click Next. It's going to give me a confirmation pop-up that I have to click on. And now a confirmation code has been sent to this address to verify the permission to set up email forwarding. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Here it's asking me to enter a confirmation code. Some companies require you to enter a confirmation code. So now I'm going to go back into my chat inbox. And on this page, I'm going to click Take Me There. Take me to my inbox. Now in here, you'll see I immediately have a message in here under the All tab. This is the email I just got from Gmail wanting to confirm permission to set up email forwarding. Here's the confirmation code that I need. I'm going to copy this. 
I'm going to paste that into Gmail. Perfect. Now my email forwarding address has been verified. Now I want to forward a copy of the mail to this address. So I'm going to select this option. Next, Gmail is going to ask me, what do I want to do with the email in the Gmail inbox? Do I want to keep it there? Do I want to mark it as read, archive it, or delete it? In this example, I don't want the email forwarding to affect any email in my Gmail inbox, so I'm going to select the option that says keep Gmail's copy in the inbox. Now I'm just going to save my changes, and I'm good to go. You'll get this warning at the top notifying you that your emails are being forwarded. This is okay. Let's dive back in to the chat inbox. Emails will show exactly like this in your new email inbox. It'll show who the message is to, the subject, who it's from, and the message contents. Now, the great thing about the email inbox is you can manage this like a ticketing system and also assign different tickets to teams. So you always have the status up here on the right. You can mark an email as resolved and that will remove it from your inbox. You can also snooze the email until you get another reply until tomorrow or even next week. And what that does is it removes the email temporarily from this list and it'll pop back up when the, either the customer replies or until the time period that you specified. Now, the, also the great thing about this inbox is it allows you to see previous conversations you've had with this contact. Anytime you get a new email or conversation in your inbox, a new contact is automatically created in your database. Now, this event, the new conversation received or new contact created, is actually a trigger that can be used in an automation flow. So if you want to trigger any sort of automation every time you get a customer, you can do that in there. One example could be, let's say you have customers in your database that are very important customers. Let's say they have the VIP tag. You could set up a flow that's listening for new inbound conversations, and when a customer has a VIP tag, maybe you want to send them a text message immediately that says, I received your email, I'm checking on this, and I'll get back to you within one hour. So the possibilities are endless on some of the automations you can do in the flows now that it's connected to your inbox. Now this works with all different channels on your inbox. So whether you're working with your email channel that you just created, website chat, or anything else, they can all trigger flows. The other thing you might want to look at in here is reporting. So under reporting, this is great if you're working in a team environment because you can measure how many different messages you got, average response times, resolution times, and more. The other thing you want to pay attention to is this send message button. Sometimes you want to actually initiate a message to a customer and you can do that here. If you have multiple inboxes, you'll be able to toggle between them. Another thing you might want to do is to dive into your new email inbox settings. So I can click on inboxes and then settings. Here, I can specify an icon or avatar that'll show on my email inbox. I can change the name, add a custom greeting, and more. We also have a customer satisfaction survey feature that you can enable. After an email is marked as resolved, it'll send the customer a survey. You can also set up different collaborators. This is where you can add agents or teammates to the inbox after it's been created. Under configuration, this is where you can always access the email forwarding address should you need it again. Now under settings, this is where you can access some different options such as canned responses and teams. Canned responses are templates that you can reuse across all your different inboxes. It's super easy to add. I'm going to add one right now. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a canned response of hi and I'm going to type in a message. Great. So now I have my can response. Every time I type slash hi, it's going to replace that with this content. Let's test that out now. I'm just going to open up the email that Gmail sent me earlier. 
And you can see right here, I can type slash hi. And if I push enter, it automatically plugged in my can response. Now I'm not gonna send this reply to Gmail, but let's go ahead and show you some of the other features in here. You have the ability to do private notes. Private notes are not sent to your customer, whether it's an email channel, website channel, Facebook, etc. These are notes that are only going to show in the conversation history for you and your team members. They'll show up as a different color right here in the chat history. Some other settings that you have are Teams. Now Teams are great because you can organize all of the users into different teams and instead of assigning tickets to particular users, you can assign them to Teams. And so you can do things like randomly route incoming emails or tickets to different teammates. Now that you've successfully created your inbox and explored the different settings that we have to offer, you can use your inbox many different ways. By coming on the dashboard and working in the conversations in your inbox, or even when you're in the database looking at a contact, you'll be able to click the button to send an email or an SMS. You can also use this inside flows on the email step. So now come in here, create all the different inboxes that you have so you can communicate with your customers where they are.